guys and I'm going to be showing you guys how to make our simple blocking system. So for this blocking system you want to start off by adding a remote event instead of replicated storage. And you want to make this remote event and you want to call it block. And we'll be using the, our combat system that we used for our last video. I'll put a link in the description and, uh, and I'll make a suggestion so you can see. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to have a, we're going to also make our little shield. So our little, I just put inside a workspace so I don't have to move it back and forth for you guys. So this shield right here. Is going to be it's, this is what it's going to be in front of us when we're blocking so we can detect when we're actually blocking so our animation is playing the show will pop up in front of us to know that we're actually blocking and, uh, and it will show that it'll be more visible to other players so they know what we're actually doing so uh nothing really important just a simple shield here i'm going to delete it from our workspace and we're going to you know, put it inside of a clear storage and then you want to make your animation or your block animation you can make a simple animation by putting the two hands together this is a r6 game you can make an r15 anything everything is fine so what you want to do here, uh, you want to make a folder inside of starter character scripts and then you want to call it data and in, inside of data you want to make a boolean value and you want to make this boolean value false like it's going to come out false but you want to name it is blocking the name is super important and we're only re the, uh, this is going to be what the most important thing to this uh, system because we want to make sure that when we're blocking we can't punch at the same time we want to make sure that when the other players are blocking and we punch them they're not going to take damage so that's just going to be super important and so we can make it super efficient for our, our single block system, right? So as our regular combat system right there, we're going to go to our combat script. So for our combat script, we're going to get user input service and we're going to get replicated storage. Pretty simple, straightforward. And now we're going to look at the player, then we're going to look at the character, and now we're going to get, now we're going to look at the is blocking value. So since it's starter character scripts, what we can do here, we can do is blocking equals character wait for child data dot is blocking dot value. So what we're doing here is all we're doing is just locating the boolean value inside of the data folder. And since it's parented to the character starter character scripts, this is basically the characters because this is a starter character, right? And now we're gonna allocate our block animation. So we're doing uh, uh so for our block animation, all we're doing was we're uh, we're loading the animation. So we get the human, then we do load animation, and then we just locate the animation inside of the parameter. So game that block case storage that animations that block. Super simple, super straightforward. And once you go here. Let me go to animations, let me go to block, that's going to be our animation that we're going to be using. And now, uh, we're going to make our, our local function, we're going to make our function uh, speed, we're going to make it speed, and we're going to put in two parameters called value and next value. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I made it like this, so it can be more uh, simpler and efficient. Uh, we're going to do character.human.walk speed equal to value, so whatever the first parameter is, is going to be the walk speed of the character. And then we're going to make uh, character.human.jump power uh, equals to the next value, so whatever the second parameter is, is going to be whatever the jump power is going to be equal to. Now we're going to do, now we're going to tie an event to the function, now we're going to do user input service dot input begin connect function. Now we're going to do input, now we're going to put in the two parameters input and is typing. If is typing, then return n. If input.kiko equals equals nm.kiko.f, then we're going to change the player speed to zero and we're going to change the jump power to zero. So they can't move or do anything while they're blocking. And then we're going to play the animation inside the, uh, the inside a local script. And then we're going to fire remote event. We're finding this remote event so we can detect whenever the player is uh, holding F and when the player is not holding S. So that's why we fire on and off. And now we're going to time event for input ended. So we're going to detect whenever the player is not holding F. And we put is typing so you can't type like forever friends on the chat and it won't like uh they won't trigger this it won't trigger this uh event. So what we're gonna do here is uh we're gonna change the player speed back to 16 and we're gonna change the jump power back to 50, the original jump power and the jump uh, original speed. And then we're gonna stop the animation and then we're gonna fire the uh 
remote event again and then we're gonna fire off and now after you do all that then you want to go then you want to go into a service script service and then you want to go to your block script right now you want to enter a, a service script and all scripts will be uh, provided in the description if you have any questions don't forget to join the discord and now we're going to do webcase storage equals game dot now, okay but all we're going to do is get the service webcase storage and we're going to get tweening service right and now we're going to now we're going to look at our shield our shield is going to be inside of webcase storage and it's going to be right here so webcase storage is our shield and now we're going to make a little tween info so we can make the shield go um so you make the shield tween for one second and we can make it so we can uh make like the style sign you can make the style whatever you want so we're basically gonna like this is gonna be the info for our twin so you can make the shield look nice whatever time you put on here is how long it's gonna take for the shield like to disappear and etc so now we're gonna make our table called v1 so our v1 table uh is gonna be what help us like destroy the shield because uh for um sometimes when you try to destroy the shield it, it will not destroy because like since you're cloning it so many times but i'll explain it further on so now we're gonna um now we're gonna fire the uh, on server event. Uh, so we're gonna do webcase storage without blocks or our event without on server event connect function, and we're gonna run player and we're gonna run statement. And now we're gonna look at the and statement is basically is equal to on and off these two uh, variables here. You're probably wondering why do we have uh so basically when you uh, use a remote event uh and you uh you fire it the, whenever you put player in here, it's not gonna be equal to the first parameter you put in here. Uh, whatever uh, let's say you put like uh, action here or you put like checking this statement here would be equal to on and off but this is basically going to be equal to the first value you put inside your uh, remote event so basically uh, now we're going to do if statement equals on so if if it fires on and not v1 player so v so our uh, player is not in the v1 table then character wait for child data dot is blocking that value equals true so now we set the value that is blocking value equal to true so we can make sure that the player is actually blocking and uh, so we can start making the script more efficient now. And now we're going to do local new shield equals shield and then we're going to clone the shield so we can have more than one shield right. And then we're going to do, now we're going to make our weld so that uh, the shield can stay in front of us. Now we're going to do uh, weld con, uh, we can name whatever you want but I named the weld con. And we're going to do instance.new weld constraint and then we're going to uh, append it to the new shield. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna make the new shield parent equal to game workspace so we can see the uh, the new shield. But then we're gonna make v1 player equal to the new shield. So now the uh, the v1 player is equal to new shield. So now we store it inside the little table. So basically, uh, now we're gonna see frame. Now we're gonna basically position our uh, shield in front of us. So we're gonna do character dot human root part dot frame. Then we're gonna do time c frame dot new. And we're gonna put it uh, negative three studs in front of the z axis so it can be in front of us. And then we're gonna uh, set our uh, part zero and part one. We're gonna uh, set our part zero equal to character that human root part. And we're gonna set our part one to new shield. And now we're gonna now this is where uh, the tweening comes in, so we can make it like disappear and where the nice stuff comes in. So now we do tween service create, and uh, the first parameter is what you're gonna be tweening. And we're gonna be tweening this new shield. So for this new shield, we're gonna tween. Uh, we're gonna use uh, new shield, whatever what we're gonna be tweening. And we want to tween it with the info we have up here. So it's going to go for one second. It's going to be enum.eganstyle.sign. And we're going to have our table in here, right? And the table is uh, the most important part of this whole thing. Uh, we're going to be making our transparency equal to, oh, right here, our transparency equal to zero so it can disappear, so it can appear again, right? And then we're going to make, then we're going to change the color to, I'm pretty sure this should be, uh, I think this is the color gray, I'm pretty sure. Yes, this is the color gray. And then all we're gonna do is gonna play the enemy. Then we're gonna play the tween. And then and it's us if statement. That means if statement equals equals off. So now we're firing off if they let go of the key. And uh and v1 player. So now the v1 now there is actually a v1 player. So there's uh like if new shield. So basically, is there like new shield? It's new shield inside the table, right? And then we're gonna do character wait for child uh data that is blocking that value equals false now we're gonna set it equal to false because the player is not blocking no more and now we're gonna uh set another we're gonna create a new tween and now we're gonna be uh tween the v1 player and this is basically a new shield because in the else if statement whatever we have in this if statement won't pass over here so we can't use the same variables here so that's why we save it to this table right now we're gonna do v1 player and now we're gonna do info tween because uh our first info that we used here uh so it's gonna go for one second and we use the style sign and then we're going to change the transparency back to one so we can uh i'm pretty sure one makes it disappear and then we're going to make a uh, color 
uh, our color equal to it should be this to be the color white yup color white and then we're gonna play between and then we're gonna wait one because we made the uh the sign of the, our little uh, info one second we're gonna wait one and then we're gonna destroy the shield and then we're gonna make it equal to nil so we can use it over and over again uh, and the changes that we added, the change that we're going to be adding to our combat script is we want to do if player.character.waitforchilddata.val is equal equal to true, is equals equals true, then return n. What we're going to do here is that if we're blocking, we try to click, it's just going to return n because we don't want to, we don't want to block and click at the same time, so we make it unfair. And the next thing that we're going to be adding here is we're going to uh, be doing it for the other player as well. So when, uh, if Ray hitblock.instance.parent find for child data, so whoever's in the the hitbox range that is blocking value equals equals true then return n so that means if the uh, that means if the player that's getting hit um if the player that's uh we're punching is inside the ray and we're and they're blocking value equal to true then we are going to uh, then they're not going to be able to take damage so all this right here will just not pass over again and that's basically how you make your block system. If you have any questions and you'd like to subscribe to the channel uh, and you have any comments, make sure you can just comment it down below. If you have any questions about this, you can join my Discord. And thanks for watching.